wakati bwana kwa sababu ya masaa haya wewe uliyeko kuwa mhubiri na mtumishi kwa watu wote tunaleta mtumishi wako mbele zako kiombo msamehe dhambi zake na zaidi ya yote roho wako mtakatifu amlinde na muongozi mtumie kama chombo nasi ambao tunasikiza tupo usikivu mwema hebu tuondolee dhambi ambazo zitatukoza na katika yote hebu sisi kwetu tuweze kujifunza katika jina la Kristo tumeomba hata kuamini God is good all the time uh, I remember in my high school life I took geography there was something that was talking about uh, time management nikiangalia we are 2 minutes behind so wangapi pamoja nami wana mkaribisha mnenaji wa siku ya leo anene na tumegee wakati uzima nash <laughs> Thank you so much. The Lord is good. And all the time. So, I thank the Lord because he has been faithful to us. It has been a blessed day. We had a, a prayer and we had a prayer and a fasting session. Hope we are blessed. Amen. For those who participated, hope you are blessed. And let not be a, a one day event. Let be a uh, continue a continue event that we should be carrying out day in day out in our lives amen? amen so i want to appreciate i'm really grateful for you each day i'm seeing people committing their time coming to listen the word of god i don't take it for granted amen, amen. and in a special way I, i've known quite a number of you and for that i say glory to god amen. today i happen to know around eight people can i see them Where's Virginia? I happen to know Virginia. Where's Virginia? She's not around. Oh, she's there. Amen. So, where else? There's another one. There's another sister. What was the name of that sister? Hmm? Virginia, the sister, the name. What was the name? Esther. Esther. Where's Esther? She's not in, right? I happen to know a quite number of you and I'm really grateful that my memory is going to retain your names as we are a pilgrims in this world. So at this particular time I want us to pray so that we can enter the today's topic which says Semba Fidelis. Let's pray. <clears throat> Most loving Father in heaven, Lord we thank you so much. Thank you for your children. Thank you for another opportunity that you have granted us a time like this in this great institution of the of the court so the Lord may come and investigate what you have prepared for us. Pray the Lord you may hide big behind the veil so that thy children may see the beauty of thy son Jesus Christ. And above all, help us to come up higher and higher so that the end when thou comest we may say indeed this is the Lord whom we have been waiting for. Be with us. Take care of us. Remove any obstruction which may deter us from hearing what Thou says, the Lord. For this, a humble prayer. Believe and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. As I said, uh, uh, when to talk, to talk about the topic which says a uh, semper fidelis. Today we want to learn some little Latin. Semper fidelis. But before we can dive into our topic, which is Semper Fidelis, which means always faithful. The word Semper Fidelis means or a simple fear. They will say it means always faithful. I want to give a little introduction. What, when you talk about, I love to study about military because we have been told, let's go to the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. We have been told to learn about military language. And when I was doing my study, I happened to look one of the compressive military, the most equipped military in the world, as they say, that is the U.S. military. Uh, I happened to get some gems which can, we can apply in a Christian work. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 allows us to begin from verse 1. How does it say? Someone who is there can read with us. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Okay. 
have, I have someone from this scholar. Can you read with us? Thou, thou therefore. Thou therefore. My son. Now Paul is writing on to Timothy. There, therefore, my son. Be strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me. And the things that thou hast heard of me. Among many witnesses. Among many witnesses. The same commit thou to faithful men. The same men, commit thou to faithful men. Who shall be able to teach? Who shall be able to teach others also? Now verse three it says, Thou therefore do what? And do what? There, there. <coughs> Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier or fool. So we see Paul is using the language of military, a soldier. And that's why I wanted to understand especially something more about uh, soldiers. So as I was looking to the US uh, military, I happened they are subdivided onto six branches. So what are the mottos of these six branches of the US military? The first branch of the U.S. military, it is the U.S. Army. And the motto of the U.S. Army is, this we do what? Defend. And this is their logo. And as I was looking through their, as I was doing the research on the same, they were saying, as the oldest branch of the U.S. military, the U.S. Army motto is stepped in a long history of service to this country. The, the phrase, this will defend was first used by who? Was first used by who? By the office. Of? So we see that is their motto. That is the first group. They are the U.S. Army. There are six branches. What is the second group? The second group is the U.S. Air Force. What is their motto? M. Then fly, fly. Fight and so we see this is the motto for the US Air Force that aim high, fly, fight, and do what? Win. Okay, uh, these things we are trying so that we can find where we are trying to make our foundation, and that is their and that is their logo or their logo for the US Air Force. Okay, we have the third group which we call the US Coast Guard. Their motto is Semper paratus. And when these are Latin one, which means always do always what? <laughs> always? <laughs> okay, now the motto for the coastal guard. Their motto is Semper paratus. When it is translated, it says always ready. ready. I'm asking you. Because the Lord is saying in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, endure hardness and as a good sort of fool. Jesus Christ. So we need to acquaint ourselves with some of this military language if we are to subscribe to be the good soldiers of who? Christ. Jesus Christ. That is the third one. The U.S. Coastal Guard. Their motto is Temper Paratus, which means always ready. Always ready. Number four. The U.S. Space Force. They also have their motto. The Space Force, they also have their motto. What is their motto? Semper Supra, which, which means what? Always? Which means always? Brothers and sisters, when I was reading these things, I was saying, Lord, there's a lot of information that we can learn, even from these things that the people of the world, they are writing, but we can gather, or we can glean some gems of truth from this kind of writing, as we are going to see even today. And this is their symbol, and this is their logo, the U.S. Space Force, okay? Number five, we have the U.S. Army, Navy, pardon. The U.S. Navy, they have a motto. What is their motto? Semba. What is their motto? Semba. Semba 40s, which means always, Caribbean. always. Caribbean. Brothers, these are some of the things if you need to subscribe to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ, you should be acquainting, or we should be acquainting with some of these mottos. Semba Paratas, Semba Fortis, which means always courageous. Okay, now the one which is going to form, maybe we can start the other day, is the, uh, the other mottos. But for the one which we are going to start today is the one for the Marine. The one for the Marine. Number six, the U.S. Marine Corps. They have a motto. What is their motto? Semper what is their motto? Semper Fidelis, which means always faithful. Let's pray. 
Aladdin Father. As we are going to begin this topic, Semba Fidelis, always faithful. May you speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, brothers and sisters, we are going to look deep into this motto for the U.S. Marine, which says Semba Fidelis. Now the question I should be asking, there is a war that is going on, and the Lord now is looking for a people who are going to subscribe to this motto, Semba Fidelis, which means always faithful. The question now, are you on the losing battles or you are maintaining Semba Fidelis? You know, of all the U.S. forces, one of the respected arm is the Marine. The Lord is good. For those who can want to do research, when I was doing my own research, I was told that one of the respected of all the branches, the one which is the most respected, respected is the Marine. Why? Because, brothers and sisters, in the, in the U.S. history, the Marine, or the Marine, the Marine Corps, they have never been defeated in any war. And they always so high and high, and that is why all over U.S., this is one of the branch which is respected. If you go, and that is some of the victories, and then you can see people have subscribed the statue for the Marine because of the good work which they have done to the United States of America. In fact, their original logo is this one, which was rebranded re in the year 2017, which says, Semba Fidelis. Semba Fidelis. And you know the mindset why they opted, they opted this logo Semba Fidelis is because of the mindset when they go to battle. The mindset that they have, the mindset is twofold. Number one, we engage and do what? Defeat. Or we do what? We fight. Or we, and do what? We win. That is the mindset that every marine soldier no need to have in their minds or back of their minds as they go for the battle. And also I'm asking today, are you on the losing battle or are you are on the Semper Fidelis? Semper Fidelis. So, this, uh, as I was looking through his heart also, I'm just trying to found the foundation of his study. I also identified there was a time now, this marine went for battle. And the men of the marine soldiers were really injured. And the people, or the marine, they wanted to revenge. But something strange happened. It was on the news. It says, Brave marine barracks bombing fast facts. So we see, this is an year, in 1883, we find the U.S. Army, or the, the marine, they were attacked. And the men of them, they were injured. As they were injured, they wanted to do what? To go and revenge. But an information came and they were told to retreat. Why? The people who their motto says Semba Fidelis. Why were they supposed to retreat? The simple reason why the army, which is the branch which is respected, they were supposed to retreat, or they were supposed to retreat from the war which they have never won is because of one thing. I want you to read in this. It says, a man known as Marine Clinton, the one who had subscribed to the Marine motto or a policy of being always faithful, he had given the information, the enemies, and that is why they were able to be injured, most of them. And this man, if you can see, he was captured, and of course that was the end of his life. What am, I to, uh, what am I trying to draw? Can it be? We are also on that kind of an enchanted ground. And the thing that made this man, or this made Marine Crichton, to spy, or to, to break the law of the Marine, which says always faithful, it was because of one person, and because he had fallen in love with one lady, a Russian lady, and that is why he was able to betray the great name. And that's why he was able to betray the great name. Can it be? Also us today, 
We are betraying the name that the Lord has called us to be faithful. We are going to see today, and most of us, we are going to look today, it is happening even if we are in our, in our very own life. Treason with love. That was the main thing. And that's why the Lord today is asking us, we be semper fidelis. What made that cry, Marie Crichton? It was because of the aspect of love. And that's what we are going to discuss today. Semper fidelis. I want to understand the book of Proverbs. I want to understand the book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. If you are there, please say amen. amen. Are we losing battle? Or we are maintaining the motto, Semper Fidelis? Are we losing the battle? Or we are maintaining the motto, Semper Fidelis? The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. How does it say? How does it say? Someone who is there, Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3 and 4 can read with us. It says, it says For the lips of a strange woman. Oh, for the lips of a strange woman. Broke as a honeycomb. Broke as a honeycomb. And her mouth is smoother than oil. And her mouth is smoother than oil. But her hand is bitter. But her hand is bitter. As wormwood. As wormwood. Sharp as a two edged sword. Sharp as a two edged sword. Continue. Her feet go down to death. Her feet go down to death. As for her steps take hold on hell. Brothers and sisters, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 2, we are told that thou mayest regard discretion, that thy, that thy lips may keep what? Knowledge. Now verse 3 says, for the lips of a strange woman. Remember what made a man who had subscribed to the marine soldier or the marine policy of being always faithful. It's only through one thing, and that one thing was love, and he was able to betray the whole army to make his fellow soldier to be wounded. And that's why today we want to, because it's a very special thing that is affecting the soldiers of the present day. Verse 3 says, For the lips of a strange woman drop as a an handcomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Let's turn the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 16. Proverbs 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 chapter 2, verse 16. If you are there, can you use this? Can you? Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16. You can move this side. Proverbs chapter 2, thank you so much. Proverbs chapter 2, it's there. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16. If you are there, please say amen. Um, if you are there, please say amen. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16. Someone to read for us. Nash, can you read with us? 2, 16 says. Deliver thee from a strange woman. I want to speak about this strange woman. Because Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3 says, For the lips of a strange woman. Drop as the honeycomb, and their mouth is smoother than oil. Now, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16. I want to snatch all of us if you are there, please say amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16. How does it say? Deliver thee from the strange woman. From the strange woman. Even, from the stranger. Even from the stranger. Which flattereth with her words. Which flattereth with her words. Which forsaketh the guide of our youth and forget the, the covenant of our God. So we see in the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 16, we have been told that to deliver thee from the strange woman. I want you to underline the strange woman, okay? To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Go to Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 20. Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 20. The question is. Are we losing the battle or we are maintaining Sampa, Ama Sampa, Fidelis? The book of Proverbs chapter 5 verse 20. The book of Proverbs chapter 5 verse 20. If we are there, please say amen. amen. And it says, My son. And it says, My son. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 20 says, I don't think that's the one which you are reading. It says, it says, And why wilt thou, my so son? Much. It says, 
And now and why? And why will thou my son? And now and why will thou my son? Be ravished with, be a, ravished strange with a strange woman. And embrace and the embrace the bosom of a stranger. A stranger. We see the Bible now and again is speaking of a strange woman, and we are going to see that is what is making the people of God, even this generation, the aspect of love of strange women. We are going to see with this strange woman, and that is why. They are not in a position to maintain the motto Semper Fidelis. Amen? The question is, are we losing the battles or Semper Fidelis? I want to use an uh, analogy, an, a, a story in the Bible, which can explain this context in a more vivid way. And that story, we can find from a man from his youth, can you step aside? From his youth, who was called, who was chosen, who was anointed to maintain the motto Semper Fidelis or always faithful. But by and by, he was not in a position to maintain that motto of Semper Fidelis. And who is that man? Brothers and sisters, that man is the man that we know so much, the man known as Samson. Amen. Thank you. I want us to look about this man known as Samson. When he got another strange woman, who is Delilah? Where you can see the Delilah, the consumer, a man of God who was chosen, a man of God who was anointed, a man of God who was dedicated to be always faithful. He also did the same thing as Marine Clinton did, a man who had been anointed by the heavenly. He had to forsake. Because of the strange woman, and we are going to see today, this is the same thing that is happening even among the people of God. Judges chapter 16. Let's go to the book of Judges chapter 16. That's where our study is going to be based today. Judges chapter 16. <clears throat> we are going to see the person who is going to explain losing battles or a semper fidelis. Judges, Judges chapter 16. In fact, let's go to Judges chapter 13 to get the context of the man we are speaking. How was he born? Judges chapter 13. The book of Judges chapter 13. You know these stories of the whole Bible when I read them, I really say, God has blessed us with a lot of gems of truth in his word. Judges chapter 13 verse 1. Give you a dear please say amen. amen. Let me read verse 1 says, And the children of Israel did evil again the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines. How many years? years. How many years? For years. those who came when we are studying the generation concept, how, how, much, how many years are in a generation? Years. God bless you. Verse 3 says, And there was a certain man of where? Zion. And there was a certain man of, a certain man of where? Of, the, of which family? Zion. What was his name? What was the condition of his wife? Hey, God bless you. And the wife was barren, and the bear? Not. Verse 2. What happened unto him? What happened unto him? And the angel happened unto Guman. What word did the angel say? And they told you, are going to conceive what? Now verse 4 say, Now therefore, Beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor a strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. Now verse 4, for lo, thou shalt do what? And bear what? And what shall not come unto him? For the child is how? For the child is was going to be a Nazarene unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of what? Yes. So we see the Lord has given the command that this child who was to be named Samson, the Lord has anointed him to do a specific task. So this Samson, he was supposed to be a Nazarene, and he was supposed to live according to the standards of Nazarene. There was a Nazarene oath. What was this Nazarene oath? Let's go to numbers. What was the Nazarene oath? No, I may try to rush, but it's good. God, what was the Nazarene oath? What was the Nazarene oath? If you read the book of Numbers, chapter 6, it speaks about the Nazarene oath. Why a Nazarene oath? Numbers, chapter 6, verse 1. If you are there, please say amen. amen. Numbers, chapter 6, verse 1. If you are there, please say amen. amen. It says, 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and they say unto them, When either, when either who and the who? Man or a woman. When a man or a woman shall do what? Separate themselves. Separate, separate themselves to a vow, a vow of what? Of to separate themselves unto who? And to so we see when someone was to be a Nazarene, he was to separate himself for to who? To the Lord. To the Lord. He was to dedicate himself to the Lord. And that is why the Nazarenes, they had a special oath that these people, they were supposed to give themselves unto the Lord. Numbers chapter 6, let's continue. How does it say? Numbers chapter 6. Verses 3. Which verse were we in? Verse 3. Now, verse 3 it says, There was no condition that Moses gave the people of Israel what the Nazarene was supposed to do and what he was, what he was not supposed to do. Now, verse 3 says, He shall separate himself from. He shall separate himself from. Wine. And the strong. Drink. And he shall drink no. Vinegar of wine. Nor vinegar of strong. Nature shall he drink any of what? Nor eat what kind of things? Moist grapes or dry. Now, as far he says, all some days of his life, no. some days of his day, some days of his life, no. it says all the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of what? Divine. From a kennels even to the husk. Now he says, verse five, all the days of the vow of his separation. They shall know what they shall know what? Razor come upon his head until the days be done what? In in the pardon in the which he separ he separated himself unto the Lord. So we see the Lord has commanded. When you read the book of Numbers chapter six, we have the law of the Nazarene. So we see the Lord has chosen this man known as Samson to be a Nazarene. And someone who was chosen. Somebody was chosen to be somebody was chosen to be a Nazarene. He was dedicated unto the Lord. So that's the person we find, Samson. You know, Samson by and by. Now when he came to Ears, go to Judges chapter 14. Now when he came to Ears, this man who was chosen, the only thing that required of him is to maintain his faithfulness. What happened? If you are there, please say amen. amen. Which book would I say? Judges. Which book? Judges chapter, chapter, Judges chapter 14, now verse 1. It says, And the Samson went where? Amen. Samson went where? Amen. And they saw what? Amen. And they saw a woman in where? Amen. Of the daughters of where? Amen. Oh, verse 2 it says, And they came up. Remember, the Philistines were the enemies of who? Amen. Israel. Now Samson, a man who was dedicated unto the Lord, he went down to Timna and they saw a beautiful daughter, the daughter of Cain, because he, he was not the daughter of Zion, a daughter of Cain. Is that the daughter of Cain? God have mercy. But he says, and the king came up and they told his father and his mother and they said, what, a, what did he say? I have seen Please speak with me. What did he say? I have seen a woman. I have seen what? Where? Of what kind of daughters? The daughters of Philip. Now, do what? Get up. Oh, he said, now get up for me to be mine. What was the response of the godly father and the mother? Verse 3 says, and his father and his mother said unto him, what was the question of the father, the godly parents? Is there never a woman? What was the question they asked him? Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? I want to repeat that statement. Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife out of the uncircumcised Philistines? Oh, Samson was possessed with infatuation. Do you say? By the way, we say love is what? You see? You see how, what, we are also falling the trap. Maybe we can meet the Samson today. Like, let's continue reading. The Bible says, what was the response of Samson? And the Sam says, and Samson said unto his father, how did he say? Yes. Oh, the father, the father asked a goodly question. A goodly question. But what's the response of Samson? He said, 
For he does what? For she does what? She said, Get up for me, for she pleased me. How? Well, a man who was called to deliver Israel, a man who was anointed, a man who was chosen, who was supposed to maintain Semba Fidelis, always faithful, is entangling himself with the daughters, with the strange woman. Genesis chapter 15. Let's continue. You can find the whole story in Genesis chapter 14. What happened with the daughter of Timna? Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. Now time passed. What happened? Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. If you are there, please say amen. amen. Because our end is to go to Gen Judges 16 is our point of study. Je Judges chapter 15. If you are there, please say amen. 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 It says, but it come to pass within... It came to pass within Hawaii. after in the time of in the time of what? That Samson did what? That Samson did what? Uh huh. And they said, and they said, I will go into my wife in the chamber. But her father could not suffer him to do what? Verse two. And her father said, I verily thought. That thou hadest utterly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her and pray thee instead of her. You know, now verse 3. I want to read. And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be. Let's read together. How, does, how did Samson say? Verse 4, please you can use the other side. He said, Verse 4. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes and they took firebrands and they turned, and they turned tail to tail and they put a firebrand in the midst between the two tails. That's another story. It's a good study. You see, Samson, this man was obsessed. This man is a wonderful story. In fact, Judges chapter 15 is a wonderful story. The story how he, he had to take. How he had to die, pay to take 300 foxes, and he set them on fire. Amen? <laughs> the Lord is good. And all the time, now go to Judges chapter 16. Let's turn to Judges 16. Now, we are leaving him at Timna. He has left Timna. Now, like the men of today. Yeah, there's some songs that are coming today. Anyway, that's it. Let's go by 16. It says, And when Samson, now, the other time was the team now. Now in verse chapter 16, where is, where is he? Where is he? A man who was set apart. A man who was called to be? Man, a question is asked. You know, go to Proverbs chapter 20. I love that script. A question is asked. Where can we find faithful? Can we find faithful men in the Kusta? Ladies, do we have faithful men in the Kusta? I want to hear from them. I want to hear from the ladies. Ladies, the Lord is good. Ladies, the Lord is good. Do we have faithful men in the Kusta? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. You, you, saw, you see, man, every man will proclaim his, God, his own goodness. But a faithful man, who can find? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. If you are there, please say amen. amen. It says, most men, how many men? Most men, most men how many men? Most men. Will proclaim everyone his own goodness. But a faithful man, who? But a faithful man who can it's only for it's not only for men who can find a virtuous who can find a virtuous Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 the same question is asked the book of Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 who can find a virtuous woman let's stand there Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 if you are there please say amen, amen. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 it says a question also is asked who who can find what kind of a woman? A what woman. kind of a woman? A woman? For her price is far above what? Rubies. The price of a virtuous woman is far more above what? Rubies. But the question is asked, who can find what kind of a woman? A what is a virtuous woman? 
Go to Ruth chapter 3. Who is a virtuous woman? Who is a virtuous I'm, I'm almost diverting from my topic. <laughs> but let's stand here. The book of Ruth chapter 3. The book of Ruth chapter 3. Book of Ruth chapter 3. If you are there, please say amen. amen. Ruth chapter 3, verse, verse 11. I love that topic because it says... What is the time? Oh, God have mercy. Ruth chapter 3, verse, verse 11. It says... Talking about the story of who? The story of Ruth. It says, and now, this is Naomi speaking to her daughter in law. It says, and now who? And now who? Fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requires. For all the city of my people knoweth that thou art what? All the city knoweth that thou art what? Let me speak to my daughter, my, oh, my, my sisters, my daughters today. You know what? A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. Amen. 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 Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, does it tell us? <laughs> Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, it tells us, Oh, a virtuous woman is a crown. What's a crown? Something you can put, can lean. How does it say? Proverbs chapter 12, verse 5, the there, please say, Amen. Amen. It says, how does it say? If you are there, please say amen. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4. If you are there, please say amen. amen. It says, a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman. Is what? Is a crown to her husband. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. You know, brothers and sisters, that was the Lord's purpose to, we can, let's not go that side. So we see, that was the, the ordained will of God unto Samson. A Nazarene, a man who was called after the order of God, he was supposed to remain Sempa Fidelis. But now in Judges chapter 16, let's turn Judges 16 where we were. That's the story for family life another day. Judges chapter 16 verse 1 says, Then went out who? Samson. Yeah. Yes. Judges chapter 16 verse 1. It says, Then went out who? Samson. To where? Yes. And they saw there what? He saw what? And they went into ah. a man who was called to maintain integrity. A man who was called to remain Semper Fidelis. He's going to Gaza. That's why those people, have you ever heard about the Gaza? Yeah. You know all these things anyway, that's another day. Have you ever heard such kind of things? Yeah. The Gaza, Gengaton, that's another day. So we see, he says, then went Samson to where? Yeah. Oh, you are also there. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. No, I want us to, to, to read the Bible together. Amen? Let's read Judges chapter 16 verse 1. It says, Then went Samson to where? And they saw their what? And they went into? Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, Then went Samson to Gaza, and they saw there a harlot. Remember a strange woman? And they went in unto her, and it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in, and they laid wait for him all night in the gates of the city. And they were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when the day did what? Shall come. Brothers and sisters, let me speak now to us. A man who was chosen, a man who was anointed, to be a Nazarite, he decided, because of a strange woman, to go to the territory of the enemy. When you speak about the story of Samson, it shows the life of people of God who are living after 1844. A people who are living during the time of investigative judgment. Now, what happened? Let's go to Judges chapter 16, verse 2. I want you to see Verse 2 and 3. And it was told the Gazanites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in. And they laid wait for him all night in the gates of the city. And they were quiet all night, and they were quiet all night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. Verse 3. And the Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and they took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them <laughs> and they went away with them bar and the all and they put them upon his shoulders and they carried them up to the top of the hill 
that he was before Hebron. Let us assistance. Through this instance, God was showing Israel that he would, would fight their battles. But Israel was satisfied to stay in substitute or in slavery. I want to see. If you read a commentary by, by Mary Ahal, he says, the gates of Gaza represent the stronghold of Satan. It is designed to keep God's people and the three angels' message initiated and under Satan's control. And that's the time the people who will maintain the Samba Fidelis are going to remain true and they remain true to the Lord. Amen? Amen. You know what? Then it says, the enemy wants to do what? The enemy wants to do what? To keep them from proclaiming God's last warning message to the world. So he engages them in with op opposition so that they are unable to go out to the world. He also entices God's people into sin, which restricts how the Holy Spirit can use them to do one to spread the messages. I want to diagnose this statement. I'm asking the same question. Are we losing the battle? Or we are maintaining Semba Fidelis. You know, this woman is also spoken in the book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 26. Let's stand there. I'm sorry, we have around 20 minutes. Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 26. If you are there, let's stand because of time. Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 26. How does he speak? How does the Bible speak? Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 26. It says, It says, For she, for she had cast down many wounded. Now, this woman has cast many wounded and yeah many yeah. strong men have oh, been even slain strong by strong men have been slain by have been slain. we know Samson was the strongest man this this woman has cast down even the mighty the strong men they have been wounded the book of Proverbs chapter 6 verse 26 how does it say it says uh-huh for, for, by, for by means of a whorish woman, uh -huh. a man is brought to a piece of bread. A man. A man who was chosen. A man who was chosen. A man who was anointed. Can it be? Let us not take the story of Samson. Let us take it as ourselves. A man mighty. He was, can you repeat that scripture? It says in Proverbs 6.26, how does it say? For by means of a whorish woman. For a means of a ghoulish woman. A man is brought to a piece of a bread. A man is brought to a piece of what? Bread. Bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. I want to speak to us in a special way that this strange woman, it can represent many us or many things in our lives. More specifically, I want to speak to us about our relationships. Amen? Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. Am I still you are have I become your enemy because of because of telling you the truth? We see this thing, a man like yes. A man like Samson, a man who was anointed, a man who was chosen. But because of he did not gain victory in that one entitlement, he was brought down to the ashes. We have seen mighty men, but because of that one step, like Marine Crenchon, because of that simple step, he was able to lead many other soldiers to be wounded. And what, who, who, who caused such kind of a thing is what we call, it, we call the leader, the consumer. Judges chapter 16 verse 4. He, he consumed the life of a man. Judges chapter 16 verse 4. Judges chapter 16 verse 4. You see, a man was chosen instead of remaining the battle, instead of maintaining simple fidelis, he chose to love another woman. This was the woman that would bring him down. Judges chapter 16 verse 4. If you are there, please read with us. It says, it says and it came to pass afterward, and it came to pass, afterward uh -huh. that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. His name was Delilah. Delilah is the consumer. Brothers and sisters, like I said, that soldier who is Marine Clinton, he made other soldiers to be wounded. Can it be? We are also wounding our fellow soldiers. Can it be? You are that 
that strange woman. You can be that lady in the church who sin sneering the other soldiers. Can you be that man in the church who is sin sneering other churches? When you see those people who can sing well, you say, God, let the singing session end first. <laughs> the Lord is saying, who can maintain the Semba Fidelis? God is looking for people who can maintain the policy of Semba Fidelis. Amen? Amen? You know, many people are wounded. You see, Samson was able to kill a lion. The, no. <laughs> no, it's things that when you look at it, we sometimes wonder. Samson, the, the strongest man people can imagine. A man who can, will mean to, to turn or to, to, to tear the lion into the pieces. But this creature. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just saying because of Allah. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And I want you to imagine using your sanctified imagination. I want us to use our sanctified imagination. This man, I want to compare these two pictures. A man who could tear the lions apart. But this creator was just sitting on his thigh. <laughs> okay. And that's why, man, the Lord is good. And the Lord, and the Lord is... The... <laughs> what am I trying to say? It is a high time that the Lord is calling his people to maintain the policy of Semba. Fidel is always faithful. No, it's not only, it was not only Samson. Many soldiers have been wounded. <laughs> not only, okay? Do you know known as Hab? A man known as Hab. Who brought down Hab? Jezebel. Who brought down Hab? Jezebel. Jezebel. What trick did he use? Witchcraft. What is witchcraft? <coughs> the sin of rebellion is go to first king first Samuel fifteen twenty three. First Samuel chapter fifteen verse twenty three. First Samuel chapter fifteen verse twenty three. First Samuel fifteen. What is witchcraft? Because before you can read that one, can you read the book of first King chapter nine verse twenty? We are told that Jezebel had witchcraft, and when you see the witchcraft that is making men today. To be entangled with a strange woman. Sec which book did I say? Second. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 22. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 22. If you are there, please say amen. amen. Second amen. Kings chapter 9, verse 22, it says. And it came to pass uh -huh. when Joram saw Jehu. When Joram saw Jehu. And is, uh, that he said. And he said. Is it peace, Jehu? Oh, is it peace, Jehu? And he answered. And he answered. What peace? What peace? So long as the whodoms. As long as the whodom. Of thy mother Jezebel. Of thy mother Jezebel. And her witchcraft are so many. He had. Who is a woe? Let me ask. Who is a woe? W H O R E. It's a harlot. Thank you, my brother. It's a harlot. It says in verse 22. Let me read you using King James Version. It says, And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, It is, is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the wardens of thy mother Jezebel and their witchcraft are so many. Now, what is this witchcraft? Go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 and 23. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 and 23. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 and 23 says, In fact, let's read 23, it says, For what? Rebellion. For what? Rebellion. Is the sin of what? Witchcraft. What is the sin of witchcraft? Rebellion. Can it be? This is what? Rebellion. Rebellion. What? Rebellion. Is what is causing many soldiers to be wounded today. They understand, they know, they can say amen, but headlong. You know, brothers and sisters, as I say, you know, men have been wounded. You know, when we think about some with Samson, there are many soldiers who have been in the same trap. Well, do you know Solomon? Mm. A man also was wounded. Man, do you know Solomon? Yes. Can you speak? Do you know Solomon? Yes. A man also was done good. Who did? How about David? You know David one day? <laughs> you know David one day? Let me tell you, the mistake of David one day 
he did not go to do what? To battle. He was not maintaining. Remember what? Fidelis. When other soldiers were in the where? In the battle. He remained his idleness. He was there in the balcony. I can imagine. He was there. Oh Lord, have mercy. So we can see. We should. The Lord is asking. We should maintain. The same what? Fidelis. Oh. Anyway. Who else? Can you forget this man, Adam? Have you forgot this man, Adam? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the list is long. The list is long. The Lord is asking us today to maintain Shema, Fidelis. Oh, you know, the story of Adam and Eve is interesting. You know, one day, if you read Patriots and Prophets, in fact, you will be amazed. You know, this day, they decided to separate themselves. If you read Patriots and Prophet. When they separated themselves, then the enemy found an opportunity. You know, as Eve was there, the tree dazzling. You know, he had the um, snake speaking. He was. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> so we see, the Lord is saying, the Lord is saying that we should, we ought to maintain what? Semba? Fidelis. Where are men today? Can the true men in the Kusta do what? Stand up! And they maintain the policy of Semba Fidelis. <laughs> but the story, you know how it goes? <laughs> you know, Adam, he was so infatuated that he did not have the thought of being separated from that, how do we call it, that rib. He forgot that the same God <laughs> who had made it had an opportunity to give him, amen? amen? That is the same thing that is happening today. You know, we are told, it's better to break an engagement than, than what? Can, can men of today do that? Semba Fidelis! Men are wounded. Brothers and sisters, and what are they doing which is making them to be wounded? They are sleeping at the laps of the enemy. Do you, do, do you see Samson here? He's sleeping at the laps of the enemy. We should get up. You know, we are told... What are we supposed to be doing? Go to, go to First Timothy chapter 4. He said, flee! Flee! What? You know, there's a difference between to run and to flee. <laughs> to flee is you, not, you, you, do not, you do not have any thought. You flee! <laughs> Can you go to First Timothy chapter 4 verse 11? First Timothy chapter 4 verse 11. Sepa Fidelis! First Timothy chapter 4 verse 11. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 11. If you are there, please say amen. amen. I don't know if that is the scripture I'm looking for. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. If you are there, please say amen. amen. Verse 22. Second Timothy, you say please. Let me see. First Timothy 22, 4, 22, 2, 22. Yes, it is. 2.22, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. If you are there, please say amen. Amen. Let's read. It says... Flee. It says what? Flee. Flee. Read also. as if people want to flee. How does it say? <laughs> Can you read as if people you want to flee? Read together. How does it say? Flee. No, let me tell you a secret. When you read these things, do you believe them? If you believe that you want to flee, read it. How does it say? He also what? Beautiful life. Oh, many of us maybe we are sleeping at the laps of the enemy. We need to do what? Flee. Are you fleeing? Let's read say, flee also what? Beautiful life. But follow after what? Righteousness. Follow after what? Righteousness. Follow after what? Righteousness. Follow after what? Follow after what? With them that call on the name of the Lord out of what? He was heart. <coughs> Semper Fidelis. Always faithful. And that's what the Lord is looking today. You know, there's a quotation from Adventist Home, page 460 says, can we read it together? How does it say? God's providential care has been over Samson. Oh, now commenting on Samson. It says, God's providential care had been over Samson that he might be prepared to accomplish the work which he was called to do. At the very onset of life, he was surrounded with favorable conditions, the parents, godly parents, for physical strength, intellectual vigor, and the moral purity. Oh, 
But under the influence. Oh, how does it say? But under what? But under the influence of what? Associates. What does First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 say? How does First Corinthians chapter 15 that 33 say? Be not, be not, be done what? Be deceived. Let's read there. First Corinthians chapter 15. You know these things, when I read the pen of separation, I say, God, you blessed us with a wonderful gift. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. How does it say? It says, it says, do, be not be done what? Evil, Evil communication. corrupt good manners. And that's why it says, but under the influence of wicked associates, he let go. He did what? He, let, he go. let go that hold upon God, which is man's only safeguard and the security against the enormity of sin. Semper fidelis. is always faithful. Then he says, those now applying to us, those who in the way of duty are brought into trial, may be sure that God will preserve them. But if men willfully place themselves under the power of temptation, they will do what? Fall soon or later. Oh, Pastor the Prophet, page 566, it says, what, let's read together, how does it say? What a change to the He's right. Now, weak. Now, weak. Now, in prison. Now, degraded to the most menials. You know, uh, that is how low sin brings us onto. That's how it brings us, we become weak to resist. It brings us to become so blinded. It becomes us to be so in prison. It, you know, let me give a message of hope where it says we are so in prison. You know what? The Lord is in the business of trying to remove captives out of the prison of Satan. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 42 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 7. Oh, my time is gone. Isaiah 42 verse 7. How does it say? Isaiah chapter 42 verse 7. It says, Isaiah chapter 42 verse 7. How does it say? It says. It says. 42 verse 7. Yes. To open the blind oh. eyes. Are you seeing the state which Samson was? He was now weak, blind, in prison. But the purpose of God coming is to do what? To open the blind eyes. To house. open the blind the eyes. To bring out the prisoners to from the prison. To bring the captives out of where? Prison. The prison. And them that sit in darkness out and of the prison those house. that sit in darkness. That is the ministry of Christ. Can we go to the book of Zechariah? You know, in the darkness, there is no water. In darkness, there is no nothing. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. Zechariah is a book in between the book of Genesis and the Revelation. If you are there, say Amen. 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 The book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah, <coughs> chapter 9, verse, verse 11. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11 says, Verse 11. It says, It says, that Because of time, read verse 12. Verse 12. Now there is hope for us. It says, Turn you to the stronghold. To the stronghold, ye prisoners of whom? Of hope. Even to, even to, Amen. do I declare that I will render double unto? Amen. The Lord is asking as the prisoner of hope to turn unto what? The stronghold. You know what? When we turn to the stronghold, the Lord is says in chapter 13, verse 1 of Zechariah. Now, Zechariah 13 says, in that day, you know that song 337, which says, There is a fountain filled with what? Drawn from Emmanuel's. That's where that song comes from. Song 337. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn out of Emmanuel's vein. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1 says, In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for what? Uncleanness. It says, now, weak, blind, in prison, degraded to the most menial service, little by little. He had violated the condition of his sacred calling. God had born long with him. You can be sure, God, he had born long to him. You know, the Lord is bearing long to us. We're told in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, God is long-suffering, does, does not want anyone to perish, but to do what? 
than unto repentance. Brothers and sisters, but I want to finish by saying this. Samson came to the point of realization. Amen? Amen. Despite all those things, despite he had wasted everything, despite spending a lot of his time in the pants of the enemy, point, although he had lost everything, although Samson had lost everything, he came to a point of realization. And I pray today we may also come to that point of realization. He realized as he was grinding those heavy corn, that machine, blinded, being struck, he, 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 he remembered that indeed seen the grapes. He remembered how he had been chosen. He remembered how his parents had tried or the parents had tried to bring up in a godly manner. He remembered how he was receiving all the consequences of what he had done. Now, in the book of Judges chapter 6, verse 21. Judges chapter 6, verse 21. Judges chapter 6, verse 21. Judges chapter 6, verse 21 and 22. Judges chapter 6, verse 21 and 22. Judges chapter 6, verse 21 and 22. If you are there, please say amen. Judges chapter 6, verse 21 and 22. If you are there, please say amen. amen. And no. someone, 16, pardon, 16, 16 not 6, 16, 21. The 16. one where it says, you know, when they took Samson, Samson was doing a hard task. You know, Satan is making us, when we are in, in, in captive to Satan, as the children of Israel, when they were in, the, in Egypt, a lot of work was done. They were doing a lot of, of work. And at the time, they cried unto the Lord. You know the same story? Samson cried unto the Lord. He realized this condition. As the children of Israel, when they were in Egypt, they realized the condition. Also, Samson realized this condition. Verse 21, it says, <clears throat> But the Philistines took him, and they put out his eyes, and they brought him down to Gaza, and they bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison. You know this strength? Now they, was, they were using that strength for their own benefit. But now verse 22. However, the air of his head began to grow again after he was done what? Shaving. That was the turning point in the life of Samson. And that's why, as he was grinding corn, and we know the corn, this, this is about, about the corn, we are told in the book of John chapter 12, and now Jesus Christ, corn must die first, to do, 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 do what? To be surrendered. But I want to see <coughs> the quotation from Adventist home page 46. How does it say? How does it say? By the custom of rain into the earth, uh -huh. the Savior represents his sacrifice for us. Uh -huh. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. You know, the story in John chapter 12, it shows that the corn has to fall and die. Then when it dies, it will bring much fruit. It was shown clear in the life of Samson. Through that experience, the Lord was teaching us that until we die to sin, and that is the time he can use us for his own Glory. I want to read this quotation in Pathways and Prophets 5, 6, 7, 5, now commenting the end of Samson, saying, physically. physically, Samson was the strongest man upon the earth. Physically, he was the strongest man upon the earth. Then it says, but in self-control, but in integrity, but in firmness, he was one of the weakest of men. Though he had a physical strength, but when you talk about self-control, you know it says, go to Proverbs 16.32. I want to, but this scripture is, keep, keep ringing in my mind. Proverbs 16.32. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. Proverbs 16.32 says, It says, uh -huh. He that is slow to anger, He that is slow to anger, Is better than the mighty, Is better than the mighty, And he that ruleth and the spirit, And he that ruleth the spirit, can he that take at what a city? The depend of inspiration says, I want us to read says, physically, Samson was the strongest man upon the earth, but in self-control, but in integrity, but in firmness, he was one of the weakest of men. Now it says, many mistake strong passions for a strong character. Many mistake strong passions for a strong character. But the truth is that he who is mastered by his passion is a weak man. The truth be told, the one who is mastered by his passions, 
the lower or the baser passions. The pen of inspiration says, is a weak man. We have seen men like Samson, men like David, though they were mighty, though they were strong, but they, because they did not control their passions, they proved to be the weakest men. And that is why the Lord now is calling us to subscribe the motto of Semper Fidelis. Always <clears throat> 466. In suffering, now, how did Samson come to realize? In suffering and humiliation, as fought for the Philistines, Samson learned learn, learn more of his own weakness than he had ever known before. And, and his affliction led him to do what? Repentance. He realized his own weakness. And once he realized his weakness, he realized indeed strength, the physical strength, has nothing to do with the moral power. Only if we depend on Christ and Him alone, He's the one who can create the moral power whereby we can be true sons and the daughters of God. Standing, standing, and spotted. Who, who, who can give us that power? Jude chapter 1, verse 24. You know, he's the one who will keep us from falling. We have seen many mighty preachers, people who can rebuke sin, but because of these sins of this regenerate world, we have seen many daughters of Zion, many people who can sing well in the choirs, who can sing, you know, when that song, when, uh, oh, that, when that voice, we call it this, that voice, what do we the, the Death is the norm. So plan, they can sing and, until they cry. You hear, Lord, heaven, uh, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. My soul. <laughs> I don't know who see, but because they did not master the passion, by and by, a faithful lady, a daughter of Zion, because he could not take care or will not surrender to Christ, by and by, is the spot of the world. A young man who can sing that bass. Talk about you. Ah, he can sing. You can. He can sing well. Bad and bad. A man who, could, who men could look onto. A lady who people could look onto. That is godly. A man who people would look onto as a godly. But bad and bad. That zeal start to vanquish. That zeal begin to die. Why? He did not gain victory over his own weakness. Tonight I'm asking, are you winning the battle or a simple? Are you losing the battle or a simple fidelis? Are you winning the battle or a simple fidelis? Two quotations to go. It says, let's read together. Satan exalted to see Samson, a man whom God could have used to his glory, so infatuated that he could betray his enemy in the hands of the driver. Satan in that he had taken Samson captive. He who go thus far, against it clearly the aggravated character of sin. Until we see what sin has caused. You know, we can see the story, we can read the story of Samson. We see, we love, we see, it's something that happened. But how often it is repeated in our very own life? Can you say Let's read together. The power of Satan is that Look and know that those who, in defiance of all the warnings and entreaties of God's word, venture to indulge in sin, are sleeping on the very blink of eternal ruin. Because God bears long with transgressors of his law, because he sends warnings and entreaties. Even you can continue. God has sent many warnings upon us. Can it be we are, we are sleeping at the pants of the enemy? Brothers and sisters, God is calling us. As Samson came to the point of realization, may it be said of us today, as the book of Revelation says, we have not come to our realization. We say, we need none, we need not of until we come to the point of realization, the, 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 the story of Samson, it speaks about the blind laudations who think they have strength, 
who think they have increased with, re with riches and need of nothing. Until we come to that point of self-realization, we can't proclaim and say, indeed, we can maintain the policy. Semper, fidelis. The Lord is asking us today, we may subscribe to this policy. And that's why I want to finish with this quotation. Testimonies for in 5 page 140 says, Dead before, dead before dishonor, all the transgression of the law of God should be the motto, should be the motto of every Christian. Christian. We have been studying the motto of the U.S. Marine Force, that Semper Fidelis. But now, the motto of every Christian is dead before dishonor. All the transgression of the law of God should be the motto of every Christian. May it, be, may it be our motto, may it be our prayer, that death before dishonor. It's, be, it's better for me to die than to transgress the law of God. Death before dishonor should be the motto of us all. Semper Fidelis. Always faithful. Semper Fidelis. Always faithful. Semper Fidelis. Always faithful. Are you losing the battles or you are maintaining Semper Shall we pray? <clears throat> you can take a minute and pray, then I finish from my end. Gracious Lord in heaven, we thank you so much. Thank you for thy children. Indeed, as Paul says, Romans chapter 10. The greatest desire is to see Israel saved. Pray the Lord you may help us all to be saved in the kingdom. None of us who has attended these meetings to be a cast out after being blessed, after hearing thou speak to us. Pray the Lord, as we have just learned this night, that our policy is dead before dishonor. Semper Fidelis, always faithful at all times. We may learn to trust you. At all times, the motto Semper Fidelis to be in our hearts. As we walk, the path that we walk in, may it portray the light Semper Fidelis. The words that we speak, may it portray the words Semper Fidelis, always faithful. Our thoughts, may it portray the words, or may it be stamped with the, with the, with the signet of heaven, Semper Fidelis. What we do, May it be stamped with the signet of heaven, Semper Fidelis, always faithful. I realize most of us, many, many times, we haven't been faithful. We haven't been faithful. But Lord, you say, you will confess our sins. You are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that is why this night we let our burdens you and I realize indeed that Lord you are willing and more than willing to hold us hand because our own we can't be faithful but if you hold us hand and if you empower us by your grace we can say and we can proclaim Semper Fidelis always faithful may God bless us and keep us safe in Jesus name Amen, Amen. May God bless you and bless you abundantly. Now, we are coming to a closer. Uh, I am moved to share, uh, for those who may be attending tomorrow, message, principles of true success uh, in relation to the, the principles in the Bible and the pen of inspiration. And specifically, in the morning, we will be looking principles in relation to the ego. God bless you. Amen.